So, uh, technology in the classroom. What is there to talk about? Uh, why is it important? Uh, what are some examples of technology in the classroom? We're only going to spend a few minutes on this, so let's make it quick. Uh, when I think of technology, I think of it sort of as a, a, it's a differentiation method in its own right. It's not something that you just, it's not like, it's like an underlying thing that you want to integrate into your classroom, but it's still differentiation because you're altering instruction to, to better fit the needs of the students. And those needs of the students have changed throughout the years. Uh, you could say 30, 40 years ago, technology wasn't as important, and you didn't need it uh, as much as you do nowadays. And it's not to say that you need it to teach, right? because people, people will say, well, you need technology to teach, and how can you teach without technology? It's like, that's a good question, but in the wrong context. Um, people have been teaching for tens of thousands of years without technology, so why on earth would you possibly need it now? Like, you can just spend your time in a library reading, and you'll get just as educated as you could if you were just on Google or using YouTube or whatever. Right? And so these things are a little bit subjective in how kids learn best. But one of the reasons you need technology is like, how can you teach without technology? The reason people say that is because they need these real world skills, the technical skills to, in the job market nowadays to function, or in higher education for that matter. And so these kids who are underprepared, right, they don't know how to use PowerPoint, they don't know how to use Google Drive, they don't know how to send an email. Um, they've never had any experience maybe building a website, for example, or, or even worse, doing research online. They have no idea how to do research online or differentiate the sources when they do know how to do research online. How are they going to be successful in today's modern age? It's a very interesting question, and I come to the conclusion that they can't be successful. Um, or it's going to take them a lot longer than their peers because they weren't provided with those skills. And so today's uh, education focuses a little bit more on critical thinking. Uh, trying to get students to do their own research and come to grand conclusions about things. And that's important. And that comes with the research component, which I think is the main reason we want to use technology. People are oftentimes horrific. They have horrible skill, horrible uh, research skills. They have no idea how to use Google. Uh, they can't come to reasonable conclusions about topics that they uh, encounter in the world. And so they just take as fact what they hear from others. And that information may be coming through social media most, in most cases. And social media sometimes isn't wrong, you know, but you have to be able to differentiate between uh, different sources. And so, uh, or fact check things for that matter. How can you, how can you fact check information? Well, that's an interesting thing. And I feel like social studies does a really good job at teaching kids how to evaluate sources, at least in Ohio anyways. Other states are moving or becoming a little bit more progressive in that regards. Uh, but it's still a difficult problem for students to encounter, uh, in, in, that they're going to encounter in their lives. And if we don't provide them with these skills via technology, well, it's going to be very difficult for them to function. I mean, just think about it. I mean, like, you're not going to pull out an encyclopedia every single time you want to look up some fact. You're going to do your research online nowadays. And if you can't, well, then you're just going to get left behind. And that's the last thing that we want for our students. And so uh, these technical skills, even when they don't even seem applicable, Let's take the case of the, the lawn mowing company, right? And you think, why do you need a website if you run a lawn mowing company? Well, the reason you need a website is because you can list pricing. You can put samples of your work, or exa examples of your work uh, for everybody to look at. Uh, you can uh, maybe have a review board. You can have contact information. Uh, maybe you could even have a, a way to book and schedule an appointment. Uh, so free times and times of, of that your business operates. Um, or maybe even the ordinances of the cities in which you operate uh, on your website. And so there's a number of different things uh, that you can do uh, if you're just a lawnmower company and you think, well, I could do, be the best lawnmower in the world. It's like, and you could be, and maybe you can make the best lawns in the world with uh, you know, the best uh, gardening and, and the like, and that would be a great profession for you. But the problem is you need to somehow get customers. And if you can't get any customer acquisition, and sure, you'll get some through word of mouth and other door to door and whatnot. But if, you, if they can't even look you up, how do they even know if they're reputable? And some people aren't going to go with you because of that. And so it's just a nice skill. It's not so that everybody's going to be building a website, but at least if you give them the skills to do so, maybe they don't have to pay $300 or $400 in order to do so um, from somebody else on like Fiverr or something, right? Or just anybody who built a website. And so these things are uh, oftentimes not the most applicable to students' careers. I mean, not everybody's going to go on to higher education. Um, not everybody's going to go on to professions where they need, say, a PowerPoint, for example. But it's nice to give them that skills, because people don't know where they're going to end up in many, many years. Uh, so if you look at today's generation, oftentimes they are in a situation where they stayed at a job for 
a couple years and they move on to another job, a job that they find perhaps more interesting, uh, perhaps more conducive towards their long-term success and career goals, um, or even just monetary for that matter. Maybe they don't even have goals. They just want to make more money. And so people are always moving around. It's a little bit different than in the past where people would stay for 30, 40 years and gather some big pension, and that was, well, that was it for them. Um, they found a nice job. They stick with it. And now they got their pension, and they're retired. And maybe they didn't even enjoy what they did. But nowadays, people are moving around. So the job market's just the people are flowing everywhere. And so you never know where you're going to end up. And it's just nice to have some of these skills, because you don't want to be stuck having to learn them on the job, because there's going to be a big learning curve. And it just gives you an advantage when you get into it. And we say, I've already done this, blah, 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 blah. And if I, even though I'm still a little rusty on it, like I could look it up. And, and that's one of the skills you want to foster, is like the research component of things. So technology in the classroom, extremely important. 